Hey folks, good morning. It's uh, James again. Sorry about the uh, photo only uh, feature of this video, but we are in the process of moving the shop uh, and uh, the entire house associated with it. So uh, this is the best that I could do on something that kind of popped up uh, last minute. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, shielding uh, the pickup and control cavities. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about the Tokai Hard Puncher uh, P-Base copy. Um, I'm on a stage uh, and we have a lot of RF interference uh, from a lot of different things um, and uh, we were I was catching catching a little bit of a buzz uh, off of this um, to the point where I I had the stuff uh, sitting around I had been waiting for a, a shielding project to do and well here's one sitting in my lap so uh, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, it didn't take a long time. Uh, it's something that you can do uh, pretty easily. Um, so let's look at some pictures of me and uh, the dining room table and the Tokai hard puncher. The uh, Tokai uses metal plates uh, in the control cavity and uh, underneath the, uh, the split pickups there uh, as you can see. Um, it's kind of a fragile uh, arrangement. Uh, this is the original wiring uh, and the original components uh, from this mid-80s kind of base, so I kind of got to gotta be a little tender with it. Um, I do have continuity uh, throughout the components um, as measured with the, the multimeter. So we're actually just trying to um, uh, contain uh, any interference we're going to get um, using the copper foil and then uh, that will be shunted to ground uh, and then we won't have to worry about the uh, the buzz anymore. As uh, with any kind of project like this uh, make sure you've got your materials ready uh, to go. Uh, disassemble your um, instrument. Uh, be careful if you have to um, move any wires. Uh, luckily all I have to do on this is uh, uh, is just take the ground wire off uh, of the jack and then the whole uh, pit guard uh, comes away uh, with the components on it. Um, if they're like most guitars, once you get inside this cavity there's probably going to be some kind of a polishing compound dust, there may be sawdust, there may be spiders, God knows what else is going to be in here. Uh, take some compressed air uh, kind of blow it out, um, give you a nice clean surface because you do have to get this copper foil to um, adhere uh, to these cavities on the inside and if it's filled with all kinds of crap uh, it's just not going to work out very well. So uh, the materials that I'm using actually came from Stumac, came in a kit. Um, this is the larger kit um, uh, and it comes with uh, the copper sheeting, it has an adhesive back on it, um, and it comes in these big sheets. It also comes in a couple of thin strips uh, as well. Um, you want to make the best use of it uh, that you can. Uh, you can see here I uh, positioned it over the pickup and, uh, and the wiring channel um, so that I, I wasted as little of it as I could. Um, my wife uh, was able to hold the sheet down and I just kind of rub my finger around the channel which gives me a loose outline of, uh, of that cavity area. Uh, I then cut probably about a quarter of an inch uh, larger uh, than I needed because uh, you not only want to cover the bottom of these cavities uh, but you also want it to run up the side and to kind of bleed a little bit over the top as well. Uh, so that it connects up with the shielding you're going to put on the back of the pit guard. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, and then I kind of uh, snipped the corners because, uh, again, I need to cover uh, that area where it, it goes from the bottom up to the sides. Um, and that's usually just the easier way. I was able to press fit it down in there um, with my finger and then I just used a Q-tip uh, to kind of get the test shape uh, of it and uh, after that peeled it off uh, and then used a, uh, a fiber burnishing stick. Um, these came from, you can get them in an art supply house, um, they're used mostly for, uh, for decorative metalworking uh, but they, they actually work really well for 
um, smoothing uh, this adhesive and getting it pressed down into that cavity which may not be very smooth uh, it may be something you want to take some sandpaper to uh, in order to get it to lay down uh, and adhere uh, nice and tight with the uh, first uh, couple of pieces laid down um, I started doing continuity checks I want to make sure that the piece of copper that I have laid down and kind of mangled to get it to run up the sides um, is still conductive um, because if it's not conductive then I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot uh, because that's what I want it to do uh, I want it to conduct any extraneous uh, noise uh, and shun it to ground um, and if it's not uh, conductive it's not going to do that job so uh, check frequently um, especially if you're getting around some complicated areas uh, you want to make sure that the work that you just did is actually going to accomplish the job that you want it to do uh, so with the uh, control cavity it was very much the same process um, uh, it drops down uh, probably a half an inch maybe three-eighths of an inch uh, the cavity gets deeper so you kind of have to uh, compensate for that little waterfall uh, effect um, get it down uh, on the bottom uh, get it kind of test fitted uh, peel the adhesive off uh, uh, burnish it down um, continuity check continuity check continuity check make sure that you're doing what you're here to do uh, and then you just kind of repeat the process. Um, I use some of the thinner strips uh, to start shielding the sides uh, of the cavities and where um, the height of that uh, shielding would permit it, uh, you kind of want it to fold over the top. Uh, not very much, just a little bit so that when you put your pit guard down uh, it's going to connect um, the shielding underneath the pit guard with the shielding going down the sides and onto the bottom so once it's all screwed together it basically acts as one unit um, so think of that when you're uh, peeling off your uh, strips and kind of planning where you're going to want to put these pieces of copper so now let's pay a little uh, attention to the pit guard I'm only going to shield the area of the pickup and the control cavity and uh, that channel that connects the two. Uh, I don't have pickups going all the way up uh, to the neck position and so there's really no need to uh, to cover that section of it. But if you have a guitar like that you've got to you've got to cover the spaces um, and the area um, where you're going to get that interference and that's going to be wherever your pickups are at. Luckily this is just a, a single split pickup. So uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's just copper sheets. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm trying to make the most efficient use out of uh, the material that I have. I ended up making three pieces uh, on the back of this. And they overlap, and that's fine. I just didn't want them to overlap a huge amount. Um, the thickness of the copper is not going to affect um, the way that the pit guard sits uh, on the guitar at all. Um, again, continuity check in between your pieces to make sure that they're doing uh, what you need them to do. Um, I trimmed out around the back of the uh, the pickup uh, cutout um, and around the uh, the volume and the tone controls. And the rest of them I didn't worry about because when I put the screws in, uh, it's just going to punch through the copper uh, and it'll be fine. So here is the finished uh, application of the uh, of the copper shielding on the uh, uh, the pickup cavity, uh, the wiring channel, the control cavity, as well as the back of the pit guard and then uh, just because I am the way I am I don't even know if it's going to make any difference or not I used a little bit of uh, the copper foil where the ground comes out and meets the bridge um, uh, here's the the components installed uh, ready to to get buttoned back up um, probably an hour maybe an hour and a half I don't know I, I I didn't I didn't get through an entire mug of coffee so I know it wasn't a terribly long process um, fairly straightforward 
uh, not expensive to do uh, and I will tell you what uh, when I played on Sunday and plugged her in man there's she's just dead quiet it was it was quite the amazing uh, difference um, so it was money well spent uh, I think the kit was 21 or 22 bucks um, and uh, like I said time was probably an hour hour and a half um, so uh, it uh, was a, a, a well uh, you know, a well done uh, investment um, so uh, think about it uh, I'm sure there are other ways to do it you can do it with conductive paint um, but this actually looks kind of cool not that anybody's really going to see it um, uh, so uh, yeah, if you've got uh, if you got some cool shielding stuff, uh, be sure and share it. Drop me a comment. Uh, drop me a link. Uh, until uh, next time, though, um, hmm, I don't know. We may be in the new shop. Uh, uh, next episode comes out. So uh, hey, uh, happy New Year, folks, and uh, we'll check you later.